Hey everyone, let's do a coronavirus update in the main news this week is that a fair few people are starting to go back to work and not just the people that work at the crematorium. Restaurants and cafes are opening up and visiting a beer garden no longer means waking up in your own backyard surrounded by empty cans of Carlsberg. There's even talk about playing sporting events again, albeit with the rule about stadiums only being half full. But having been to a couple of football games in the Scottish second division, that means business as usual for a lot of places. Certainly the severity of the economic collapse hasn't been helped by the country's almost complete switch to a service-based economy, rather than one focused more on heavy industry, where ironically a lot of the jobs like welding and mining used to involve wearing masks. Nonetheless, times have changed and that way of life is gone, I guess, very much like Prince Andrew and Beatrice's wedding photographs. Tell you what, when I heard he'd been airbrushed out at the wedding pics, I thought at least it makes a nice change from Prince Andrew doing the touching up. The real battle, of course, will be over schools, where four factions are lining up for battle. There's the parents who want their kids to be in school, the parents who are terrified of their children being around others, the teachers who want to remain on paid time off until there's a vaccine or they can retire, and the government that know that whatever solution they pick will be polarising and therefore unpopular. So they're kind of hoping that a consensus can be reached by the public or the newspapers or the internet on their behalf. Though that is, of course, the same panel of experts that couldn't decide what colour that dress was a couple of years ago, or whether that audio clip was saying Laurel or Yanni. If you've ever read an opinion piece by a columnist, probably in the mail on Sunday, who couldn't decide whether to bring back hanging or whether hanging is too good for people, that's pretty much where the policy is going to be getting dictated for in the next couple of months as to how schools will operate next year. For what it's worth, the science pretty much says there's no risk at all. I'm looking at a study of Chicago where there's only two people under the age of 19 who've died from COVID, as compared to 12 from accidents, 4 from suicide, 36 from other repending, and 46 from gun violence. The latter, of course, is due to the fact that large swathes of that city are open war zones run by criminal gangs, and that criminals in Chicago tend to be a lot more violent and a lot less amusing than the movie Home Alone or its sequel would suggest. I jest, of course, the sequel is in New York. To give the government some credit, though, Boris can hardly be said to be disinterested in the disease he had it after all and he nearly died from it and that's more than I can say for myself he's presumably very aware that whatever he chooses is going to result in immense damage being wrought either to people's health or the country's economy or just to the Scottish question nonetheless it is his job though and the cabinet's to make that decision it's what they're paid for after all and I'm kind of hoping that perhaps one lesson to come from the coronavirus is that the next time politicians want to give themselves a big bumper pay rise for the valuable work they do maybe the public should stand up and instead offer to give them a round of applause on a Thursday evening Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.